Cabinet Secretary for Education, George Magoa, said the final examination for both the Standard 8 and Form 4 students are ready. The CSA preparations have been completed and it will only be seen on the morning of each day of the exams. The CS was speaking on Wednesday in Nairobi while opening the Nairobi County Education Quality Dialogue for the competency-based curriculum. The CS said his ministry will implement the CBC because it is what Kenyans want. He also paid his tribute to the late Kibra Member of Parliament, Ken called the USA camp to Kansa last week. He promised that his ministry will provide infrastructural support to schools in Kibra that were initiated by a court. My professional family, others here who are uh, here by extension, uh, including the other arms of government, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to be very, very candid. As I respect, we have worked with the Ministry of Interior extremely well for the last four years that I, have, I found myself within the central government while I was at NEC. And uh, before I start saying what I wanted to say, I want to address the issue of infrastructure in Nairobi. And uh, I, will re I will use one of the, our colleagues who, who, who has rested. First of all, Nairobi has 17 MPs, and there is a relatively small area. And each MP is endowed with 100 million Kenya shillings. So I'm deeply saddened, not by her, but by her crying out, because I'm going to charge those MPs who are still alive. There are 16 of them, 16 minus one. Because Ken Okoth was a living example of what the kind of training we had at Starry Boys Center to do what you have to do without fear or favor so that you can be measured. So I didn't expect, as cabinet secretary in charge of education in this republic, to worry about infrastructure in Nairobi. So I'm charging the MPs to wake up and start doing their work within the Nairobi metropolis. And I don't want to end there. Ken Okoth has moved uh, forward by building a school, which I hope is ready. If it is not ready, I would want to know what is left there. So we finish it like yesterday and open it. <laughs> not just open it, but make sure it is operational so that this pressure of 100% transition can be eased for us. And since we do things that we measure, can we make sure that uh, those people who have a lot of money and for a very small place are able to do what they have to do? But having said so, my dearest ladies and gentlemen, for those who do not know me, they say that I, I am very, I don't know rude or what, but, but I want to tell you that I'm a complete gentleman, very soft, spoken, very gentle. <laughs> and therefore, I'm happy this morning to officiate this very important event, which happens in the 47th uh, County Dialogue. And I'm very happy to note that all our stakeholders, including the most important ones, I note that the chairman of NAT is here, and you are welcome, sir, to join us in the journey. Because this is a war that we must win for our children, and we need your input and support there. At the onset, I wish to thank everyone who is in, in one way or another has helped us. And I once again want to uh, single out Nat, because you said we are not trained teachers. And so that has been one of our bottlenecks, and we are training teachers. We trained some yesterday, we shall train some next month. And I'm pleading to you, sir, to help us with that training process so that our teachers, I've seen that the ones who are trained are extremely good in class. Those of you who have gone to, uh, to class in any part of the country, you will see that those teachers are as good as you would expect them anywhere in the world. So those who have not been trained, we are training about 60,000 or others again, and we want your support and all others. Because you see, as a father, 
Not that I have so many wives, but I'm a father of everybody since I represent the president in this ministry. A father who has about uh, 100 children. All the children are not the same, isn't it? There are some who will be brushing your shoes in the morning. There are some who will go to wake up on, uh, in bed in the morning. And they are still all your children. So that's how I take all of you. And we have to be holistic. And if we are unanimous in going forward, I think the, the work will be less. During these countrywide consultations, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have managed to get credible feedback and challenges that are attending to our education, including a, a new baby CBC. And I think this point should be understood very, very clearly, that this is not going to be an easy work. Everybody must contribute with the right foot forward. Are we together? Because you'll go to some schools and you find they are completely well endowed and they are able to manage in, term, in terms of infrastructure. There are some that are overcrowded and we have been given money One point, uh, for primary schools of just 300 million. But what else can we do to help? All the MPs in this country, have, like I've said, have 100 million. We are lobbying them to help us to also improve the infrastructure. And like I've said before, without fear or favor, I'm a proud Kenyan. If I have a child in the school that the structure is not very good, if I voluntarily want to help, the key is voluntarily want to help, then let us empower those who voluntarily want to contribute for the betterment of infrastructure to be allowed. As long as our very competent and good teachers, ladies and gentlemen, do not misuse that opportunity to extort money from parents. Are we together? So let us not be afraid because the country is ours, the children are ours, and if the PTAs, through their own volition, are able to help, let them help. But never you take away a child, even if it's Magoha's child and Magoha doesn't want to pay. That one, leave the child in the class because the father doesn't want to, it has to be voluntary. And if they are poor children, like there are many of them, there are very many of them, don't remove them from school because you want them to contribute. Because some may want to contribute, but they don't have. And I believe if you do those, if you do that, you might find you get up to 50, 60 percent of the people who will also help the government. It is not changing the constitution, and I'm not going against the constitution. We are free, isn't it? So if we work together, I believe the infrastructure journey will be a little bit better because the government is giving it all, all it can. It has thrown everything onto the ground. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the meetings offered us a wonderful opportunity to disseminate uh, the Kenya National Examination uh, Council uh, research findings that reveal progress we are making as we seek to effectively deliver quality education. And if you remember th those results, which I'll not remind you because I know you know them, they are not doctors. They are not doctors. They are real. And they require that we, we improve what we are doing, isn't it? Uh, secondly, during the dialogues, participants have been able to share experiences on the ongoing curriculum e uh, examination reporting uh, and uh, educational material distribution. But I'll just uh, take a few at a time. One of the things that I can tell you with uh, clear certainty on my head is that a very great majority of Kenyans are ready to have positive input in a sustained and continuous implementation of the CBC. Despite, uh, like I told you before, I've met now up to 41 uh, stakeholders, and we are going to continue to meet others. And what I picked from one major one that we met, when we met so many bishops, I don't know how many there were, the point I picked from them was the issue of early pregnancies and early marriages. But what pains me most is early pregnancies. Because early marriages are voluntary and the parents are guilty as charged. Early pregnancies, the child is guilty. And there's this debate, do we use then abominable uh, material that is developed in another culture to train our children. 
And the bishops challenged us, and we have agreed, and Dr. Okay, Juan is very healthy, you can look at him there. I'm a Gula Mzuri. We have charged you, Dr. Juan, to develop content quickly, actually yesterday, content that our culture can accept, which we can use in our schools to teach our children about their bodies. It can be done, it can be done yesterday. So that we stop pretending, pretending about, oh, you know, you can't say that. I've gone through very carefully about the content that is from outside, and it has some repugnant practices. And the church, all of them, from mine to the smallest, when they speak with one voice on that issue, we must accept. That is why we meet the stakeholders. It's not for a cup of tea. Are we together? With regard to the uh, early marriages, my dearest sister, who is now the county commissioner, maybe your wisdom can help me here. How do we change the culture where you sell your child before the child becomes of age? And it be, does not become a huge political outburst. Where as soon as the child is 14 years, you say, what, you know, your bride price was paid 30 years ago. And therefore, you must go and we ate it. This is a, a, a discussion that must be done now by everybody. Because there is a danger to the girl child. How do we protect the girl child in school? And ladies and gentlemen, I want to speak very clearly about fidelity to our girl child. Because last year, I think money was provided for the pads. And you see, for me, I don't trust anybody. So I go to the person who should have got the pads. You'll say, oh, we gave all of them. I will not listen to you. You'll bring a report. We gave all of them. I will not listen to you. I'll go very quietly like a, a tortoise and go to some of the girls. I will milipata. I took a pata. Do you get the point? So this year, I had thought the money was going to be under my control, and I can tell you unequivocally that I shall check whether our children have parts. Regrettably, the money is not under my control, and therefore that is going to continue. But I will still continue to go and check, and I will shout about it. Because you must, there are girls, if you have a boy and a girl, you must know that a girl needs a little bit more attention than the boy. So there's no reason why a girl should, should be uncomfortable for a whole week every month are we together? Yes. And this year, the good government of, uh, of my employer, who happens to be Uhuru Mwige Kenyatta, when you hear a dog barking, there's the owner of the dog. That is the, of my owner, for now. He has provided 460 million shillings, which in my view is enough. And the way to go about it would have been to go to the companies manufacturing these parts, negotiate with them, they produce en masse at half price, you check quality, and ensure that the parts are delivered. I hope that will be done. I really hope that will be done. And may God punish you if you don't do so. If you have the money, you don't do so. On the other issue, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> what we picked also is that uh, the issue of drug abuse in our schools. It is very interesting. The gentleman you are seeing in front of you in a suit was not a gentleman before. He was a truant child from the eastern wastelands of Nairobi. Are, are we together? And if I did not go to Starey Boy Centre, where somebody called Patrick Shaw took absolute watch on me, and any time I went, I, I left the, the class through the window, I was taken back to wait for six strokes of the best, I would not have been what I am today. Now we are starting from the home. We are starting from the home. Our parenting has failed. We must learn to give vitamin that is called vitamin no. Reporting for the Kenya Digital News, my name is John Matava.